I'm going to kind of walk you through my career and just give you this sense of some of the things that I have learned along the way. And, and it really started right here at the University of Texas. I went through, through the ROTC program here. And in between your freshman and sophomore year, they send you on what they euphemistically call a cruise. Um, I, was, uh, I was on a ship, fortunately, out of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. But what they do is, as a young officer, they put you in the enlisted ranks. So you live with the enlisted men. And this was a nine-week cruise. You live with the enlisted men. And you find out what life is like as an enlisted man for nine weeks. And I will tell you, it's absolutely the best experience you can have as an officer. And one of the things you have to learn as you become more and more senior is you never, ever want to lose sight of what the troops are doing, what the troops are going through. Because you're going to make decisions that are going to affect their lives. And if you don't have an appreciation for the problems that they have, I guarantee you, you're probably going to be making the wrong decisions. When you're in a leadership position, you are always going to sometimes see what you think the right thing to do is. If you don't communicate that, if you don't constantly communicate that, you will lose the troops. And they won't know what you're doing. So I will tell you, as you go through your leadership position, make sure you are communicating constantly. It was a great lesson for me. Um, the other issue that you learn in BUDS as a young officer is you're always expected to set the example. Now, when I went through training, we had four off at some point in time, we had four officers that were left in training and about 50 enlisted guys. And the enlisted guys watch you every second of the day. And in fact, as you become more senior, you are scrutinized, whether you know it or not. They watch how you wear your uniform. They watch how you walk. They watch how you talk. They watch how you do your actions. They watch you all the time. And all of my instructors in SEAL training were Vietnam veterans. And they expected, while the officers and the enlisted go through the same training, they expected the officers to set the example, always. To be there on time, to have the best looking uniform, to run harder than anybody else, because that's what leadership is all about. You have to set the example. And I will tell you, in your leadership positions today, if you think for a minute, the people that work for you aren't watching you every minute of the day, you're mistaken. They are. They want to see how well you perform their, your job and whether or not you're setting the example that they want to achieve. You have to hold people accountable. Um, you have to hold people accountable because if other people's good behavior doesn't matter because all behavior is treated the same, then why should anybody go above and beyond? If working hard, if doing the right things doesn't matter, then why do it? You have to hold people accountable. Later on became the commander of all the West Coast SEAL teams. And it was interesting because when I was the commanding officer of SEAL Team 3, you're always concerned that the guy above you, as Greg said, everybody's got a boss. You know, in the military, you got bosses, 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 bosses. But the boss right above me when I was a SEAL Team commander, I was a Navy commander. He was a Navy captain. We called him the Commodore. And I always thought that the Commodore was watching everything I did and that every time a kid got in a bar fight in Coronado, California, which seemed to happen quite a bit, that somehow, you know, he had his list out there and you know, McRaven's team, they got another check on the blog, another kid went to, you know. And so when I became Commodore, and I will tell you what that did when you had this kind of fear of the guy above you, it did kind of constrain how you operated as a leader as a SEAL team. So I told myself when I became the Commodore, which I did, I called in all of my commanding officers and I said, look guys, here's the deal. I said, I'm not watching your command every day. I'm not, I'm not seeing who screwed up and, and what you could have done better. What I want to do though is I want to make sure that when there is a problem, you're solving that problem. That's how I'm going to grade you. It's not that there are problems unless they become consistent problems. But I wanted to give them room to maneuver mental room to maneuver so that they could take some risks, so that, that they could implement change, so they could do the things they thought they needed to do without feeling that I was always pressuring them to do that. Yep. You really do have to own a problem. I don't care whether you're the president of the university, whether you're the chancellor, whether you're the dean, wherever you are, something's going to happen under your watch. And you can't, you can't let somebody else deal with that. You have to jump in the middle of it, and you have to deal with it. Failure. You know, you're, you're going to fail. Uh, you know, if you haven't failed a lot already, you're probably going to fail a lot more if you're in a leadership position. Things go bad. Things go bad in combat. Things go bad in universities. Things go bad. If you allow those failures to crush you, then you're not going to make the next hard decision. And you always need to be in a position to make the next hard decision, but take into account 
the failures you've had. And finally, uh, when I got to U.S. Special Operations Command, and this is really just weaves into what we're doing here. In U.S. Special Operations Command, I'm a, a four-star admiral, and I had 12 subordinate units. Think, think of them as the presidents of universities. But 12 subordinate units, uh, three-star and four-star command, or, and two-star commands spread out all around the world. And the one thing you learn is it's about servant leadership. It's about servant leadership. My job as the four-star was to make sure that the three-stars and the two-stars were successful. My job was to give them the maximum latitude to do their job, to provide them the resources to do their job, to recognize that we hired them because they're the right people to do the job. You have to have respect for the people that work for you. But more importantly, you, as the guy in charge or the gal in charge, you have to earn their respect. It's not about them earning your respect. You have to earn their respect every single day. Because when you're at that level, when it's a, when it's a servant leader, it's not about you. It's about the people that work for you. And you spend every day trying to make sure you're doing right by them. And if you can do that, all the organizations are going to succeed.